Thanks for checking into the TN Outdoors 9 channel. I'm TN Outdoors 9. Some of you already knew that. This is a Glock 19 9mm 4 inch barrel. Some of you knew that as well. That's our test gun for tonight's ammo test. A little bit past sunset on the deck. A cool August evening. But I still have bugs flying all around these lights. You might see one like right there. And the cows, which are a few hundred yards off to my right. They're not my cows but they are kicking it up for some reason. I don't want to know what they're doing, but you might hear them in the background, so I want to get that out of the way. Underwood Ammo, I've been testing quite a bit of this lately, and I want to say I am not being paid by them. They're not sponsoring me. I am buying this ammo, paying to have it shipped to my house, but I'm really intrigued by what they're doing. So let me get through this phase. I'll move on to something else, and we'll probably come back to Underwood and some other calibers, say 10 millimeter, things like that. So the Spear Gold Dot, 147 grain. I like this as a carry load. Pretty consistent round. Their advertised velocity is 985 feet per second. In 2011, when I tested this, Glock 19, four inch barrel, 972 feet per second was my average. And that was a pretty good test if I recall. Now Underwood, what are they doing here that is so special? Well, velocity. Using the Spear Gold Dot, 147 grains, they're pushing it to advertised 1,175 feet per second, nearly 200 feet per second faster. That's close to a 19, 20% increase in muzzle velocity, which comes in at about a 40% increase in muzzle energy. So how do we do in this round? Five shots, there they are with the Glock 19. As you can see, one of those came in just under the advertised. The average is 1,153 feet per second. That is incredible. 434 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. That velocity is by 100 feet per second faster than any 147 grain load I have tested so far. And that was the Federal HST 147 grain plus P back in 2011. So how does all this add up when we get into testing? That's going to be the sim test block. Four layers of denim shooting from 10 feet. So if you've watched previous tests, and I hope you have, you notice that the color of this block is much lighter than what we've had the past several weeks, if not past several months. This is the first batch of a new block of SimTest, and I'm posting a video about five minutes in length that explains what I'm doing and how I set up these ammo tests. I get that question all the time, so check that out if you're interested. Now, what I'm seeing here relative to 9mm, all bullet weights, 40, 45 ACP, and let's even add 357 SIG to the mix. I really like that caliber. This is a very narrow channel. It's about half an inch wide, half an inch deep, but it's very long as far as what I'm seeing as the stretch cavity, and that's coming in about seven to seven and a half inches. Typically see four, maybe five inches. So that's interesting. Now we move up to the complete track on this side of the cut, and I hate to use the word or phrase shockwave, but you can actually see it right here. Also with this discoloration, okay? But again, about half inch wide, half inch deep, a little bit of denim pulling in here, but it's really long as far as the cavity, seven to seven and a half inches up to this point about right there. There's the seven and a half inch mark. Now we're moving on, and there's the bullet. The leading edge I've measured at 12.75 inches, 12 and three quarter, and what we should expect and what did happen is that when you take this OEM bullet, the gold dot, and push it to velocities that are quite a bit higher than where Spear has it specced out, you should expect it to expand to its maximum. And I have never seen a 147 grain gold dot expand that much. In fact, I haven't seen very many 147 grain period from anyone expand to that level. That number just seems unbelievable for 147 grains, 0.814 inches. That's the high end. The average is 0.791. 147 grain bullet. Mine's coming in low at 145.4 grains. I meant to say at the beginning that the recoil for me 
not really that bad at all. I've been shooting a lot of 357 SIG and 10 millimeter leading up to this test, so anything's going to feel better than that. But bringing it back to a level playing field with 9 millimeter, I'm not really noticing that much between the factory spear product, although there is about a 40% increase in energy. They're doing a good job of distributing that when, when you're actually shooting. Able to keep shots on target, uh, did a pretty good job with that. So I think that's a plus compared to a hotter 115 or 124 grain. And that's also relative with muzzle flash. I'm not seeing as much here, very little, compared to the Underwood 115 grain and 124 that I have tested previously. It's going to come down to penetration and expansion. There's your gold dot from the Spear factory product test earlier this year. I believe that was April of 2012. That penetrated about an inch and a half deeper than tonight's test and did not expand as much. Obviously, it's about 0 0.582 if I, if I wrote that down correctly. So it comes down to that. More energy is going to lead to less penetration, more expansion. Less energy, more penetration, less expansion. Make a pick. Thanks for watching.